Hello! In this video, we talk about the cumulative distribution function or the CDF. So, remember that uh, as we discussed before, one way to describe uh, the distribution of a random variable, a discrete random variable, is to use the probability mass function. We define the probability mass function of a random variable x. Px of x is equal to the probability that the random variable x is equal to x. So, for example, Px of, I don't know, 3 is the probability that x is equal to 3. Now, another way to describe the distribution of a random variable is to use CDF. And CDF has some advantages over the PMF. In particular, CDF can be defined for any kind of, any kind of random variable. For example, it can be defined for discrete random variables, continuous random variables, and mixed random variables, as we see later on. However, the probability mass function can only be defined for discrete random variables. Okay, so what's CDF? Here's the definition. The CDF, uh, or the cumulative distribution function, of a random variable x is defined as follows. It's a function, so it takes an argument. So, we show it, uh, for random variable x, we show it by f sub x. So, that shows that this is a CDF for the random variable x. And at any real value x, this is the probability that x is less than or equal to x. So, in, uh, in particular, f x of, let's say, 1.5, is the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to 1.5. Now, if I give you another random variable, let's say random variable y, we can show it its CDF by f sub y. So, f y of uh, 3 is basically the probability that the random variable y is less than or equal to 3. So, basically, it's a function, and we can put any real value here. So, the CDF is defined for all real values. So if I ask you to find the CDF of a random variable, you need to find the value of this function for all values of x, where x is a you know, number in the real line. Okay, so to better understand this, let's look at an example. So here is my example. I toss a coin twice, and I define the random variable x as a number of observed heads. And I want you to find the CDF of x. Of course, the coin is uh, unbiased. It's a fair coin. And you assume that the coin tosses are independent. So I suggest that you use this definition here to find the CDF of X before watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's look at the solution. Uh, here I have a random experiment. I toss a coin twice. And what are the possible outcomes? Well, one outcome could be tails, tails. It could be heads, tails, tails, heads, and heads, heads. And the probability of each of them is just one-fourth. Now, if the outcome is tails, tails, then x equals going to be, is going to be 0, because, you know, there is no heads here. If there, one of these two happen, then x is going to be 1, and if the outcome is tails, tails, then x is going to be 2. So, I have a random variable with range 0, 1, and 2. And we can find the probability of each of them. Uh, probability that x equals 0, well, it's just one of them here, so 1 over 4. Probability that x equals to 2, there are two possibilities. So, px of 2 is going to be uh, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, which is 1 over 2. And px of uh, 2 is going to be 1 over 4. So, this is px of 1, sorry. Okay, so uh, we found its PMF. Basically, we, we can plot the PMF, probability mass function. So, the probability that x is equal to 0 is 1 over 4. The probability that x is equal to 1 is 1 over 2. The probability that x is equal to 2 is 1 over 4. Now, I want to find the CDF. So, let's show the CDF of this random variable by f sub x of alpha, where alpha is a number, is a real number, right? We need to find this for all real values. So, from the range of this random variable, we can immediately find the value of the CDF for some of the alphas. For example, if I ask you what is fx of minus 2 or minus 3, what do you say? This is the probability that x is less than or equal to minus 3, which is basically 0, right? Because x is always uh, a value from 0 or to 2. It's going to be 0, 1, or 2. So it's not going to be less than minus 3. So basically, I can write down that for all alphas, for all negative alphas, basically, for alpha less than 0, then fx of alpha is going to be 
zero probability this, because this is the probability that x is less than or equal to alpha. How about if alpha is a value larger than or equal to two? So if alpha is somewhere here, for example, what is f x of three? Probability that x is less than or equal to three. That's one because x is always less than or equal to three. So f x of alpha in this case is gonna be one for all alphas larger than or equal to two. Note that we need to be a little bit careful about when we put larger than or equal and when we put less than zero here. Okay, so let's choose a value between zero and two. Let's. How about if alpha is something, some value between zero and one? Let's say alpha is 0.5, right? What is if f x of 0.5? Well, the probability that x is less than or equal to 0.5 is the probability that x is equal to zero basically so for alpha less than one but larger than or equal to zero fx of alpha is basically probability that alpha is uh, x is equal to zero so if x of, is going to be px of zero is going to be one over four and finally if i choose a value here probability that x let's say 1.5 x is less than or equal to 1.5 is a probability that x is either one or zero so for alpha larger than or equal to 1 less than 2 fx of alpha cdf at point uh, alpha by definition this is probability that x is less than or equal to alpha which is equal to probability that x is either 0 or 1 which is um, 1 fourth plus uh, 1 over 2 which is going to be 3 fourth and we are done because if you look at this we, we have covered all real values of alpha so let me summarize this thing here f x of alpha is going to be as we saw is going to be zero for alpha uh, less than zero right here you, know, you, can, you cannot see it anymore for alpha uh, between zero and one larger than or equal to zero less than one uh, it was one over four for alpha for alpha less than two larger than or equal to one is going to be three over four and finally for alpha larger than 2 is going to be 1. So let's plot this function and see how it looks like. Well, if this is the real line, alpha, uh, and let's say, you know, we are going from minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now, before 0, fx is going to be 0, the CDF. So we go here up to the point 0. Then at point 0, there is a jump. We jump from 0 to 1 over 4. So let's say this value is 1 over 4 here. So we jump from 0 to 1 over 4 and then we stay at 1 over 4 up to point 1. At point 1, we jump from uh, 1 over 4 to 3 over 4. So let's say this is 3 over 4. And then we stay at 3 over 4 up to point 2. At point 2, we jump to 1. And then we stay at 1. So this is basically how the CDF looks like. So this is, in fact, the function CDF, the CDF of x. Okay, now, how much do we jump at each point? The value of the jump at point zero is the probability that x is equal to zero. So here we jump from zero to one fourth, and this is exactly one fourth, it's exactly the probability that x is equal to zero, which is one over four. The value of jump here at point one is three over four minus one over four, which is 1 over 2, which is the probability that x equals 1. And finally, at x equals 2, the amount of jump is 1 over 4, which is equal to probability that x equals 2. So, for discrete and variable, we have this conclusion that at each uh, point in the range, like here 0, 1, and 2, the CDF jumps, and the amount of jump is equal to probability at that point. So, we can talk about properties of CDF for discrete random variables. So let's summarize these properties. The first property is if I ask you, as we move to the left, right, what is uh, the value of the CDF? In other words, if I ask you what is fx of minus infinity or the limit, what do we say? The probability that x is less than or equal to minus infinity. Basically, that is zero, right? X is always larger than or equal to minus infinity. So if x of minus infinity is going to be 0. Similarly, if you, as you go to the right, what happens? 
the CDF approaches 1 because uh, you know the, by definition CDF is a probability that X is less than or equal to alpha so if alpha equals infinity then probability if alpha equals infinity then probability that X less than is less than or equal to infinity is basically 1 so if X of plus infinity is 1 okay so another property that we notice is that by definition the CDF cannot go down so if you go from left to right the CDF can can only go up so this is a non decreasing function it cannot go down so CDF is a non decreasing function another way of saying it is that if alpha is less than or equal to beta then the CDF at point alpha is less than or equal to the CDF at point beta. Okay, so the third property that I want to talk about is the jump property that we discussed. You know, for any value in the range, if you look uh, at the value in the range, let's say for any xk, xk is a possible value of x, xk in the range, in the range of the random variable x, then if you look at the CDF at point xk minus the CDF at point XK minus Epsilon, where Epsilon is a very, very small value, then this is a jump at point XK and is equal to the probability that X is equal to XK for Epsilon small enough. Okay? This is what we saw here. You know, we jump here, we jump here, and we jump here. Okay. And finally, the last uh, property it's a useful formula. If I ask you what is the probability that x is larger than a and less than or equal to b, you can write this as probability that x is less than or equal to b minus probability that x is less than or equal to a. And by definition, this is fx of b minus fx of a. So if you want to find the probability that x is larger than a, less than or equal to b, you can simply use the CDF. And note that I might, must be careful where I put less than and when I put less than or equal to right because for discrete random variables that could make a difference okay thank you